So to create a position versus time graph using Google Sheets, first what you need to do is incorporate your data into the spreadsheet. So the first column is always going to be your x-axis on your graph. Okay, that's true whether you're talking about uh, Google Sheets or Excel. And so what I have here is some time and position data gathered. So what you want to do is you want to highlight all of the data and go over to insert and we're going to insert a chart. Now Google Sheets does a nice job of actually putting everything together for you, but it interprets what you think the type of graph that you want. So this is a line graph, but what we really want is a scatter plot. Okay, where each point is listed out. Now, they already did a nice job of pulling in the column headers and naming this as position versus time, but you can double click in here and change this if you want. Change either axis title. You have your values here for each, but the scale and range that they're going to use is um, typically what you're gonna want. Now, if you just saw to get in and out of there, if you click off, you can double click your chart and it brings up the editing tools. So what we really want to do is we want to add a trend line here. So under customize, we're going to go down to, to series. Okay, and under series, we're going to look for a trend line. So we're going to click to add a trend line, which again, a trend line here is just basically an average line of all the data, making the best fit line. Notice that it doesn't have to actually connect through any of the, all of the points or any of the points that's creating up the data. It's really the average best fit line that encompasses all the data. But what we want to do also on here is we want to be able to get information from this. So we know that the slope of the line on a position versus time graph is going to tell us what the average velocity is over that period. Of time. So to add the trend line, we need to go to label, which is under The series, we're going down to label, we want to add a label to it. Instead of none, we're going to say use equation. So what this does is it adds the linear slope equation, y equals mx plus b, and it tells you that m is the slope of 0.255, in this case meters per second. So I've created a position versus time graph. Well, let's go ahead and click on the graph and control C, and we can copy and paste it into a Google Doc, just as if we were creating um, our report, or we wanted to use it for our report. So if you right click, or rather control V, this paste, you can link to your spreadsheet. Now, when you click this, it's actually creating a live link. So as you change that data back on the spreadsheet up here in Google, Do uh, Google Sheets, that will automatically update here in your Google Doc. So I'm just gonna paste unlink because I don't wanna have it linked. I just want to leave it as an image file of what I what I captured at that particular time. So I've incorporated this position versus time graph into my report. Now, when you embed these in your reports, don't make them super small. Make them so that they're large enough so that the person that's viewing the report can actually read and interpret the information on the graph. All right, so I guys also want to show you here how to use the equation editor in Google Docs. And you can see here that I've written out the equations here using the editor and also just typing it in. And you can see that it gives a much more professional look here, right? The speed equation, we have displacement, and then we have acceleration, uh, the change in velocity over a change in time. And, you know, you can expand upon these variables, use subscripts and superscripts, and you just really are limited here. So the way you're gonna go ahead and do that is you go to insert, down to equation and then this little toolbar pops up here for new equation let's go ahead and do uh, the equation for velocity so velocity is going to be velocity is equal to so we go ahead and we can do velocity is equal to now we need a fraction here because it's displacement over change in time so up here we can find a fraction different mathematical symbols here. 
again, different operators. All your Greek letters are here in the first. And here you have some different arrows and vector arrows indicating moving through an equation. All right, so what we're looking for here is a fraction. So we're going to add the fraction. And then it's delta x. So if we add the delta symbol, and we'll add x. And then we're going to click down in the bottom. Again, adding delta t. And then we can click over here. And then we're going to hit equals. So you'll see that drops out of there. So there it is by itself. If I want to continue this over, I can hit new equation again and hit equals. And now let's expand what the delta x is and the delta t, similar to what we did up here for acceleration. So we're going to put in the fraction first. So you got to set the framework of whether you want a fraction or not first, and then add the, both the numerator and denominator. So we're going to add a fraction again. And on the top, this time is going to be final position minus initial position, except this time I need a subscript. So right here is your subscript and superscript. So we're going to put that in. And again, it's going to be X and in for the not there it is you have to kind of click in there this is again where you know it's a little clunky um, in comparison to the equation editor in microsoft word but you're still able to get get what you need done and we'll just put a t in for the displacement of the, i mean the change in total time all right so a much better way to represent your equations in your lab reports again using the equation editor under insert and equation it's going to pull up the toolbar here and once it's up it's in there for the whole time and if you need to you can just go ahead and click the new equation once the toolbar is up and then it activates these buttons